Hi, and welcome to lesson 8 on connections. In this lesson, we're going to talk about some engineering questions that we need to answer before we can actually establish entanglement between distant nodes. And we're going to begin with step 1 on naming. We have been naming states um, as we have been learning about repeaters and quantum networks. And it seemed like a pretty straightforward thing. We didn't even think about it. But actually, there's a lot of subtle issues that we need to address. Quantum states are always transforming. They're not static. Repeaters have to take uh, decisions both independent and coordinated. They must decide, do we purify? Do we swap entanglement? Do we perform error correction? Do we forward the qubits that we have? Or do we buffer them and keep them for later? Or do we outright discard the qubits? So repeaters need to communicate to other repeaters things like this. Apply unity U to your part of our shared Bell pair. Or, my measurement outcome on the qubit in the second Bell pair was plus one. What was yours? So, repeaters need a way of identifying individual qubits. How do we do that? We can look um, and take inspiration from classical networks. In IP networks, an address is associated with a network interface. So we can try and do something similar in quantum networks. We can say that a physical qubit can be uniquely identified by the address of the quantum network interface card, or QNIC. This is the equivalent of the classical network interface card. And it can be uniquely identified by the address of the qubit inside the QNIC. So our first try on naming a particular qubit could be something like the following tuple. Cunic address followed by the qubit in index inside the Cunic. However, there are some issues that we must think about. Each node is entitled to move the logical state of a qubit to a different physical qubit without notifying other nodes. The other nodes don't care in which particular quantum memory the state is stored. It just cares about the state that's shared between the nodes. Also, Physical qubits are reused after being freed, so they may correspond to other states after they are, be after they are freed and reused. Also, no the node issuing the request might have to refer to the physical qubit before the resource has been allocated. Because of all these issues, we can say that using physical address is constraining and unreliable. In order to solve this problem, we're going to introduce two naming schemes. The first scheme is an external or virtual address. This scheme refers to the states shared between nodes. It must be unique, of course, and it is determined by the node involved in the creation of the state. This could be done at the BSA that's interfering two flying photons, or it could be done at the entanglement swapping node that's doing entanglement swapping between stationary qubits. And a possible address might look something like this. First, the node address, followed by a timestamp. This timestamp identifies the time when the state was created. In order to ensure uniqueness, we have a requirement that timestamp is of high enough precision that at most only one bell pair may have been created within that time window that the time step is identifying. And the second naming scheme is an internal or physical address. This refers to the physical qubits encoding the states. This naming scheme is only known to the node housing the qubits. And each node maintains a private mapping between the external and internal names. So when some message comes from a distant node saying, please apply a following operation to your state, the node can uh, translate where that, state, where that physical qubit corresponding to the state is stored. For example, here we have two nodes of a network, node one and node two, each having three quantum memories, sharing two bell pairs. The links represent bell pairs and they are what we have been calling the external names, or shared external names. While these qubits inside the QNIC uh, held by node 2 are referred to by private internal names. 
Also, we have to keep in mind that states have finite lifetime. Multiple states merge to become a single state. We have seen this many times when we were talking and learning about entanglement swapping or even error correction. For example, here we have two shared Bell pairs, state one and state two, and by performing entanglement swapping on the middle two qubits, we create a new state, state three. So our naming scheme must reflect this fluidity in the physical, in the quantum states. Also, names may be remapped when crossing boundaries. These may be software boundaries between modules, or there could be hardware boundaries between networks. So, as you see, naming is not that simple. This concludes our step. See you in the next one.